All right, you might have seen on Twitter, but for a long time, this dates back years and years, I was a big critic of people who were full gyro. Just all they threw was MVP with, you know, the black rim, outer gyro, right? Uh, I was someone who made fun of it. I thought it was very stupid. I thought that people who claimed it went farther had no idea what they were talking about. And um, yeah, as we step into the modern era of disc golf, we have James Conrad winning a world championship. I've now tried more MVP, and the more I try it, the more I like it, which leads me to where I am today, in front of you, saying that for the next 30 days, I'm going to be going full gyro. My entire bag is going to be only gyro, um, only MVP or Axiom, that's the rule. And I'm gonna just see what happens. i will be documenting my whole journey with you guys. Um, today is day zero, which basically means today is the day that I need to actually figure out how I'm gonna build my bag. I'm not gonna start the 30 day count until I get to actually throwing it. So if it takes me two or three days to get all the discs I need and stuff like that, we just got a shipment in of MVP discs. Um, so hopefully I'm able to get everything I want, but I'm gonna start with people who know best in an MVP Facebook group and I'm just gonna post each disc in my bag, what it does for me, and get some recommendations of what I should be throwing in place of that disc. And then I'm gonna build out my bag. And um, yeah, my rocks, my Thunderbirds, my destroyers, I'm not gonna see them until the end of July. So I'm pretty excited for this journey. You'll probably have seen glimpses of it before this comes out throughout our different videos of me going full gyro. After a night of research and a lot of responses, I've got my list over at the warehouse now and we actually just got an mvp shipment in this is some of it here so i'm just gonna go down the list and pick out the discs and then um when i get back to my desk i'll show you what all i grabbed so i picked up all my discs from the warehouse i'm gonna run you through what i have um and what slot i think it's gonna fill in my bag um got a pretty busy day today so i don't think i'll be able to do field work today but i'll probably go do field work tomorrow and see what discs I need to replace or switch up. Um, I have some from our used section I took, some that Trevor beat in previously and stuff like that. Some of these I don't know what they're gonna replace. I just, they're from the used section, so why wouldn't I just grab them? This is a special edition Photon. Allegedly, this will be somewhere around my Zeus or my Destroyer, the Photon. So I have a few Photons I wanna try out. This special edition one's a little beat in. I got a Terra from Trevor. I'm pretty sure the Terra is going to be kind of like my CE Firebird. It seems like it'd be that overstable, kind of like that slot. Um, so that's the one a lot of people were recommending. And Trevor said he threw this in a field once and didn't like it. So now I'm throwing it. Um, I didn't say it like it. No, Trevor said he hated it actually, was his exact words. He said it's a little more stable vault, which I think is exactly what I need. But I also have this really beat up fire, Fireball from our use section, I think also could be my CE Firebird replacement. They both feel really good in the hand. So it's just gonna depend on how they fly. My DX Rock, I have a really beat up DX Rock. So someone a while ago sent me this dyed Paradox. I'm just gonna put that in my bag as the, the beat up DX Rock. I think that's gonna be a, basically a perfect replacement. I have this beat up Envy from our use section. It's just a neutron, uh, sorry, cosmic electron firm that I think will replace my Ringer GT for my forehand straight approaches. And I've been throwing the Ringer a lot for backhand straight with a little fade. I think that's what this beat up Envy is going to do. I also have another Envy that I'm going to put in to replace my like Rico. Um, so this Envy I think will be a good ringer slash Rico. And then I have another Envy for more overstable approach. Brand new fireball from Trevor that went in his bag and out of his bag. This is going to be my captain's Raptor replacement. I'm pretty confident on that. I'll probably throw it once or twice in the, uh, in the field. I don't really expect it to it's gonna be very overstable and that's all I need. So this, I have a Fission Wave. Um, this wasn't really recommended to me, I don't think. Oh, it was recommended to me as my Zeus replacement. I think it's gonna be a little flippier than my current Zeus. So I think it might actually be a good Thrasher replacement, but I really just wanna throw a bunch of distance drivers in general, so I grabbed one anyways. And from what I've heard, the gyro technology is the most noticeable in Fission plastic, so. I'm very excited to give that one a toss. This is gonna be my KC Pro Rock replacement, my dead straight one, just a Neutron Hex. I've thrown this before. It's a nice like Heiser Flip dead straight disc. And I think that's exactly what my KC Pro Rock does. Next up, we have the Virus. This is gonna be replacing my Jackalope as my like really understable fairway driver slot, Heiser Flip to turns. Um, 
I'm excited to throw it. The Vanish is the next one up. This is in Proton Plastic. This is what was recommended to me to replace my Thrasher. And I think it could be basically that. It's almost the exact same flight numbers, but again, flight numbers mean absolutely nothing. So we're gonna go in a field and, and see. I think between this Vanish and that wave over there, we'll probably be pretty close to that Thrasher Zeus mark. Um, and then the next one up, we have a Fission Photon. And I also grabbed a Fission Octane. Uh, I think that these discs will kind of fit that, like I have a really overstable Hades, um, really overstable for a Hades. So it, it's a flip up slight turn um, when I throw it like as hard as I can. I think one of these two is gonna fit that slot. Um, I'm assuming the Photon is gonna be a little less stable than the Octane, which means this will probably be the Hades and this will probably be like my Destroyers. And so what I ended up doing was I got a Fission Octane and I got a uh, Proton Octane. octane. And I figured that this would be like a brand new destroyer. This would be a slightly seasoned one. I don't know. I've never really thrown MVP plastic, so I could be just talking on my butt there. But that's kind of what it feels like. So we'll see. This one definitely feels more overstable than this one. So hopefully that's true. And these are my destroyer replacements. This slot isn't technically in my bag, but I want it. It was this Prism Envy. They feel incredible. And they're relatively, I mean, Envy's are overstable by nature. So I think this is going to be kind of like my Rico, but slightly more stable. Um, which is a slot I don't really have right now, but I don't think that matters. It's a slot I could definitely use. So I'm gonna go with this Prism Envy, feels great in my hand, and plus it's a red on red rim, so it does have the gyro, even though it doesn't look like it. I love I love discs like that, so. Next, my Enforcer replacement, we're going with the Panic. Very overstable distance driver. This is the first one that was recommended to me when I put the Enforcer on the list. Some other people said a few other discs, but they, I don't think they quite knew how overstable my Enforcer was because the only reason people weren't recommending this is they said they thought it'd be too overstable. This slot, I don't think such thing exists. I'm not, I'm looking for as overstable of a fast disc I can get. So the Panic, I think, was exactly what I need. Similar thing with this Deflector, replacing my Recluse, just a Justice type disc. People were saying the same thing. They thought it might be too overstable for what I'm going for. That doesn't exist. I'm going for a very overstable mid that I can just like not be able to throw anywhere and just have to rip on forehand or backhand to get it to do anything. And so if this is, people were saying it might be too overstable, that's exactly what I wanted. This Crave was recommended to me as my FD replacement. I don't really think that's gonna be true. I think this is gonna be more like my Maverick. I think it's gonna be a little less stable than my FD. So I kind of went off script, but people have been freaking out over this Fission Crave. So I made sure I picked one up in the Fission Plastic from our site um, and yeah, I'm very excited to throw them. Oh, my last crave was like a flip up and slow ride. If that's true, that's gonna be the exact um, exact thing that I want from the Maverick. I gave away my last crave on our last trip before I thought of doing this, so. Next down the list, we have the Catalyst. I have to remember what this was recommended. This was recommended as my Domi Hades replacement. Um, so I have the lightweight Octane that might be doing that, but then I have, you know, this Catalyst to try out as well. Again, looking for that like flip up slight turn out of it. So my pure replacement is going to be the proxy. I've heard this is a good hyzer flip, flat to turnover putter, and that's exactly what my pure is doing for me. So hopefully the proxy is able to accomplish that as well. Feels very comfortable in my hand. I feel confident with it. We'll see what it does. Got another Volt just because I know I'm going to like it. Um, and so this will kind of just slide right in there uh, as that like vengeance, overstable Thunderbird type disc um will i end up putting two volts in my bag depends how similar they are and how much room i have i don't know this insanity i think is going to be more of my fd replacement i think so that's why i picked one of these up i'm pretty excited about it a proton insanity it feels very good in my hand uh worst case scenario it flips a little bit more and i kind of love that so that's my new mvp bag i obviously have the entropy and the nomad already in there and so I'm locked in. I have them. I'm going to go ahead and take all the discs out of my old bag, all my old discs, keep them on my desk so that when it's time to do the comparison, I have them ready to go and put all the new MVP discs in my bag and see what happens. All right, out here for the first round with my full gyro bag. I figured what better place to try to learn and test it than New London. It is like seven o'clock at night right now. Um, so that means I have about an hour 40 of daylight or so, so I am going to have to kind of book it through this round. So I'm not sure how much footage it'll get of me actually throwing, because I'm not going to be carrying around a tripod or anything like that, but I'll try to get at least a few shots, but I'm just excited to get out here on a very tough course, very demanding course, and force myself to learn these discs and see what they're all about. Quick update, just through my insanity on hole two out here at New London, it's a 612 foot par four. 
and I just smoothed it out there. There's the basket. I just shot the basket. It's exactly 200 feet out, which means I threw this 412 feet, and it felt like I barely tossed it, which for me, it's also a nine speed. Um, very impressive, very impressive. B double Electron NV might be the greatest time putter on the market. Okay, I have to document this one as well. I don't know if I'm just on one today or what's going on. This is a 512 foot par, par four, I believe. Um, basket's right there. I uh, just shot where the tee is, which is the bottom of that hill. I threw this about 410 feet. I'm exactly 100 feet out from the tee, but I shot back to the tree that's right next to the tee. And I just, 410 feet uphill, the catalyst flew very similar to my Hades but I've never been able to clear this lake in one. I decided to try it. And I mean, I, I cleared it by, what's that, 70 feet, 60 feet? I, I don't know. It's gyro, man. Good start. Round is officially over. I uh, wasn't able to film much of my throws. Um, and I think this is probably the wrap up of week one. Um, overall, so far so good. Started off the week kind of rough. Um, Started off the week kind of rough. Didn't get, I got my bag fully on Tuesday, went out in the field, threw on Tuesday, uh, and then didn't really throw too much again till today. The field and the course, two completely different experiences. Um, I found some molds I absolutely loved in the woods out here. That was one of the best rounds I've played. I shot 10 under at New London Shorts, which is very good for me. Um, and yeah, the catalyst was flying great. The wave, I started to understand a little bit more. The insanity, probably going to be one of my favorite fairway drivers of all time when it's all said and done. The hex flew great. And then the envy is just unreal. Um, so those are the ones I pretty much only disheck through. I took a few out of my bag to try. I threw the photon some on forehand. Had good success with that as well. But completely different experience in the woods. So week one has been a success. I definitely know some of the molds I really like. Not sure how much I'm going to get to play next week. I'm going to try to play at least two or three times a week so that this is a fair video. And I'm not sure how much throwing is actually going to be in this video because it's really hard for me to film when I'm throwing by myself. But hopefully as we get some video shot for the main channel, I can pull clips from that to kind of show you what I'm talking about. But week one in the books, great success. All right, just finished up a very hot field work session to round out week two. I'm already halfway into the month of all gyro. It's going by really fast. Um, and that was a very important field work session. So to walk you through kind of how I've gotten to where I am right now, week one, um, went out, did a field work session, kind of depressed, didn't go so hot, went to Falling Creek, or not Falling Creek, New London, played the shorts, shot one of the best rounds of my life, feeling really good. Started week two, played a doubles battle beginning of this week just me versus connor and silas playing doubles at new london longs i played bad but i was also in the in me playing bad i also had a few shots that were very disappointing and made me really start to question gyro start to question the mvp bag question the discs uh in particular hole one i threw my hex it didn't flip up at all Ended up being an okay shot, but didn't even try to flip up. And it did the same thing to me on a different hole later in the video. I want to say hole six. Uh, did the same thing to me. Um, and then there's a few other instances. Hole 18, I threw my wave, expecting it to flip up. It didn't flip at all. And there's a few other instances like that where discs weren't flipping up. And so I went to Twitter, asked some people. Some of the like big gyro fans uh, basically were just recommending discs and weren't understand what I was trying to get across because I was saying like these discs just don't always fly the same and then a few people who had like tried similar things to me uh expressed similar experiences and they broke it down that form inconsistencies um and like the amount of spin the amount of speed drastically affects MVP discs a lot more than other manufacturers so when I came up to the field today I focused on slowing myself down getting my timing right to make sure i got enough spin on the discs and they flew a lot more like how i remember them flying so i think the crucial thing is is if i'm having a bad round if i'm not hitting the discs right these discs aren't as forgiving but the flights they achieve 
are slightly different than the more forgiving discs that I'm used to. Um, so in the field, I really focused on my timing and I got, I really got a good understanding of these discs. I got a great understanding of like when I hit a disc hard, what it's going to do. And more importantly, when I don't hit a disc hard, what it's going to do. So then I know when I'm pulling a disc out or looking at a line, a disc like the Insanity, for instance, if I don't hit it hard, it'll still flip up to flat for me, still go and just fade. If I hit it hard enough, it'll flip up, turn and then fade. Um, and so I also put a vanish in. I believe it's a vanish, which is like an 11 speed insanity, to be honest with you, is what I've, I've found. Um, and that does a similar thing. If I don't hit it hard, it'll still get to flat. Um, but if I hit it hard enough, it'll give me a nice full flight. And so understanding that really helps me because like the Crave, you know, that was another one. The Crave, I hadn't had flip all the way up on me on a decent bit of hyzer yet. At New London, it did and caused me to go OB on what I thought was a good shot out of my hand. In the field, I, I now understand if I hit it, I don't hit it hard enough, it'll do the like FD where it doesn't quite flip up in hyzers. If you hit it hard, it'll get all the way up to flat and go. Um, so I basically just need to understand how the discs fly differently because the amount of spin I think drastically affects them. But I ended it just trying to see, David Wiggins Jr. is coming in town next week and we're gonna be doing like a combined distance comp, um, Trevor and I against him. It should be a very funny video. You've probably already seen it at this point. But I wanted to at least know what my discs, my distance drivers did. Um, so I ended it just seeing how far I could throw all these discs. And um, I ended up the Octane, the Photon, and the Catalyst all went over 450 feet, which for me, that was like my ceiling. They all three, back to back to back, went over 450. And um, all but two went over 400 feet. Most of them were in like the 420 range and then the two distance drivers I, I got nose up one I meant to put Anheuser on and the other one I put too much hyzer on and they just kind of stalled out They still even like complete mess up went about 360. So Distance wise, I definitely feel like I'm throwing these discs as far as I've thrown anything else um, Ever so I think you know another two weeks with these I'll really learn them I'll really get a good understanding by the end of this video and then I'll be able to give a good breakdown and uh wrap up the conclusion of this month by deciding what's staying in my bag and what's coming out all right week three of the mvp only challenge is in the books uh we're actually in charleston now which is the start of week four for me the final week and i'm starting to actually feel confident with this bag you're falling um whether or not that means that a lot of these are staying i don't know but the big disc this week there's a few ones first off the matrix i put this in my bag you're falling again Put this in my bag and um, have been really loving it for four hands actually. So a lot of people told me the Matrix and the Hex were like the same disc. The Matrix definitely more stable, at least these two are. Um, and the Matrix forehand is a super straight forehand disc. I've been loving that. Uh, the Entropy, or not the Entropy, I already love that disc. The Envy for me, I carry three of them now. Um, feeling confident with that and the big breakthrough for me is the distance drivers. I actually feel confident. I know what they're going to do. Um, I'm sticking with, I have two photons. No, I have two octanes, one photon, a wave, and a panic, and a vanish. Um, and that kind of covers literally everything I need. Um, so I'm feeling confident going into the final week. Not feeling super confident, though, how many of these are going to stay in my bag when I throw my end of a disc again. Well, not Innova, mainly Innova, my whole mixed bag. When I throw my mixed bag up against it, I don't know how many are staying, how many are going, uh, but we'll play this week out, see what week four holds for us. Got to actually play some good disc golf down here, so hopefully it holds some good disc golf, but we'll see how that goes. And then, uh, yeah, after, after this week, when I get back home, I'll put them head to head against the old bag and see what happens.
We're officially back from Charleston. Uh, the bag, if you haven't seen, the MVP only bag got the job done. We were able to bring home the Creator's Cup. And now it's time for the final part of this video to, to go back through. I originally was going to throw in the field with them. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I'm just going to talk through each mold, what, it, what mold used to cover it, what covers it, and what's going back in my bag. So this is the part that you're probably waiting for the whole video. This is probably the part that I could have made the entire video instead. But four week challenge is over. And uh, my final thoughts on MVP, they definitely fly different than normal discs. I will give them that. Do they all go farther? Certain molds do. Um, I don't think across the board I can say that gyro in general goes farther or anything like that, but it, they're all very solid discs. By the end of my month here, there's not a single disc in this bag that I feel like is a bad mold or gyro stupid or anything like that. I was very impressed with everything in this bag when it was all said and done. Um, and like I said, I definitely, by the end of the four weeks, I think I was playing just as good or better um, than I've ever played. Uh, not ever, but than I've been playing recently. So it definitely didn't hold me back. And I think that forcing me to practice and learn new discs actually made me a better disc golfer. So if you're interested in trying out MVP, I would highly recommend it. But let's go through the bag. Nomads definitely staying. They were in the bag before. They're not going anywhere. The first, first question, the proxy. Started with the proxy when we started. Um, went to the baseline envy for a little bit, lost the baseline envy, proxy went back in the bag, and after throwing the envy, I realized how good the proxy is. Uh, because the proxy is just a true dead straight putter. The envy tends to have like a little flip up for me, and then hyzer, harder, whereas the proxy was just point and shoot, and it flew very, very, very similar to my Rico. And um, when it's all said and done, I think I'm more confident with the proxy right now. So this Rico is sick. I really like the die on it. Not saying it's never going back in the bag, but for right now, proxy stain because I'm very confident with it. And we'll just keep with the putters, two envies here. And um, to be honest with you, this envy is very flippy, really beat in, got it from our use section, flip up turnovers. Uh, it's kind of what I was using this pure for. And I, I feel like I'm just as good with it. Um, I really like the stamp on this pure. But again, I like the fact that I'm able to accomplish what I'm about to say with the next one with the same mold. So I like mold minimalism. Pure is coming out of the bag. Flippy Envy is staying in the bag. And then this uh, Prism Envy is actually going to end up replacing my Ringer. Because again, I can have one mold accomplish for me what two molds are doing. And I think that whenever you can do that, it's a good thing because I feel confident throwing these forehand as well, and that's all I was throwing my ringer for. I never threw the ringer back in. So Envy, they're staying, and the Rico, Pure, and Ringer are all coming out. Entropy was already in my bag, staying in my bag. This is a very tough decision that I haven't fully thought through yet. My DX Rock versus the Uplink. I might need y'all's help on that one. What is this? DX Rock versus the Uplink. You think it's got to be the uplink? Yeah, you're so, you shot you I know, the DX Rock. rock. You're so good. You got it. I mean, you know, you know in your mind. That what the I think I am better with the uplink. You're definitely better. You the uplink, incredible the uplink, the uplink when it gets to Anheuser, holds it. The Rock is... <sighs> it still wants to fight out of it a little bit. Uplink stays. Oh, yeah. The deflector versus the recluse. The deflector is a bit too stable, is all it is. Um, the recluse accomplishes a lot more of a straight flight for me. It just flies like a longer entropy. And the deflector is an insanely good disc. It rivals the like justice and that stability. The recluse just has a little bit more straightness to it. So I'm going with the recluse, but I really, the deflector is actually uh, a shot that like, I was very confident in the whole month. Um, there are a lot of really good overstable flex shots and stuff with it. Love the disc. If you're looking for an overstable approach disc, I would check it out. But I like the recluse more. I got to go recluse. The Matrix is an incredible forehand disc, but it's just not as overstable. Rock three, Luster Rock three is going back in. Uh, I that I could not find a Rock three. I couldn't. I tried a few different discs. I tried the Reactor. I think it was um, the Matrix. Nothing was a Rock three. The Matrix flew great. Just wasn't wasn't a Rock three. 
the hex is an interesting one for me, a very interesting one, because it flies very similar to my red KC Pro Rock. The difference is I can throw this hex like 350 feet somehow on just a laser straight rope. I can't throw a GX Rock or a KC Pro Rock that far. Dang, I thought I had this all decided. I think the hex has to stay. I think it has to. Obviously, I can change my bag around. If I go a few more rounds, the rock can come back in. I'm not getting rid of this rock. I've just thrown too many good shots with the hex this month that I'm feeling this disc right now. I think it has to stay. I have. Then I only have one rock in my bag. Okay, Hunter, no, listen to yourself. No. You can't just keep the rocks just so you're a rock thrower. This rock's going back in. Nothing, nothing was close to it. I, I mean, that one's, that one's going back in. That I was not. This is again very similar. It's a slightly overstable mid. All the MVP mids I tried were either super overstable, like the pyro and the deflector, or flipped up on me, and I couldn't find something in between. KC Pro Rock, ten time baby, in the one that's definitely out because I never. I don't think I ever threw this. I threw it in a field, and I just, I just didn't like it. Tesla gone. Uh, we don't even have to talk about it. First up, the Fireball versus the Captain's Raptor. The Fireball, when it was all said and done, was a bit more stable than I like to throw in this slot. And so the Captain's Raptor is going back in. Um, I think the Fireball fits a lot of people's games. just doesn't fit mine. Nothing wrong with it. But I had this beat-up Fireball that flew a lot like my KC or my CE Firebird. The difference is... You pull out the CE Firebird at the flex. You pull out a beat-in Fireball. It's just a beat-in Fireball. CE Firebird's going back in. They accomplished essentially the same thing. It was a great disc. The Virus is an interesting one. I ended up not really throwing it too, too much, but I think it fits a very similar category to my Maverick, but it has more turn, which I didn't like because it made me not trust it as much. So the Maverick is definitely going back in. I missed that Maverick. I'm not going to lie to you. Really missed it. The Insanity is a disc that I didn't have in my bag. And I missed it. I missed, I think I'd miss it if I took it off, took it out. It's not exactly replacing anything, but obviously it's gonna have to physically replace something because I don't have, oh, no, I'm lying. I'm lying through my teeth. It was like the jackalope, but I actually knew what it did every time. The jackalope was coming out of my bag anyways. Now I have a disc that actually does what I expected the jackalope to do, which is the insanity. So that's good. Okay, the Volt was sick. But it flew a lot like my Thunderbird and my Vengeance. You know I love my Thunderbirds. Volt, I'm sorry. You're gone. Thunderbird, welcome back to the bag, buddy. I miss you. The Crave. Now, this is a decision maker here. Because I have the Crave, and I have what I claimed to be my favorite run of FDs, the new Sea line FDs. And I think I have to go... I have to go with the FD because I know what it does. The Crave would sometimes flip a little bit more than I expected, but if you haven't found that dead straight fairway driver and you don't like the FD, you've got to check out a Crave. It's a six speed, but I mean, I was able to throw it. There were some holes that I was throwing at like 370 and like, you know me, I don't throw that far. Crave was an incredible disc. Feels like a mid, flips up for me, but the FD, I mean, it's an FD. It, I feel like I just personally, I absolutely love the FD. Um, now, here's an interesting thing I'm going to run into. Um, I didn't ever really have a replacement for my Vengeance, but I've put an ad additional mid into my bag. So something's got to go. I think the answer is going to come in the distance drivers. Oh, shoot. I also had my all time favorite Thunderbird turned back in. Oh, gosh. I really wanted to put this back in the bag. This wasn't in my bag previously. This thing's gorgeous. I think I, I think the Vengeance is also just going to be out. I think I got to put my all-time favorite Thunderbird back in. Like gyro, dude. No, that point. That's just <laughs> that's just a non-gyro decision that had to be made. Um, all right, now we're into the distance drivers. This is where I had my most headache up front and my most excitement down the line. The catalyst I thought I was going to love never threw it. I explain why. Uh, because the Octane turned out to be so much of a better distance driver than I thought. I actually really loved the Octane when it was all said and done. And what I'm about to do is going to shock the world. So I think these two Octanes flew exactly like my Big Z Zeus and my Hades. Whew. 
I love my Big Z's use in my Hades. <laughs> but here's the deal, right? I'm very particular about the run of Hades and the run of Big Z's uses that I like. And I'm very particular about their dome, all of that. These were just two stock discs. So when it's all said and done, I can get this Fission Octane to flip up and ride like my Hades. And I'm confident that I could walk into our warehouse and grab another one if I ever lose one. These Hades, it's one run. I can't find this run again. People have given me this run. I have like three more of them. But I like being able to just replace it. I don't like having to, like if this was a CE disc, sure, it's going straight back in the bag. But because it's like a specific run, but like no one knows it's cool, it's tough. So it's not really a flex having this in my bag. I'd rather just have a stock disc do it. So, and additionally, I can have one mold accomplish what two different molds did. And I feel confident with them. I really do. I like the Octane. It, You're dirty with that Octane. It goes very far. It flips up for me and rides. It's a sick disc. The Octane stays. Panic is something that I just never, I never got behind. I couldn't, it was very, very, very overstable, um, but didn't have any glide. I don't know. It, it fits kind of like my Chameleon Enforcer. Is that what they call this plastic? Yeah. yeah. Uh, except for this one has a foundation stamp. This one doesn't. So no person, no hard feelings. This is going back in. The Vanish, I never really got behind. Uh, it doesn't really fit anything. It's gone. Uh, the Wave versus the Thrasher is an interesting question. A very interesting question. Okay, I can fit three more discs into the main compartment. And I have five in front of me. Okay, okay. We can do this, Hunter. You think they both are out? But I don't have a flippy distance driver then. You don't like the wave either. I think I'm temporarily putting the wave in, but it's on it's on fraud alert. It's on house arrest. It's in it's in my bag, but like one mistake and it's back to jail. Okay. But okay, so now we have built out. A decent bit of distance driver and there's no destroyer in my bag. Ooh. The photon has to go in. There's no option. I've never thrown forehands with a disc better than the photon. I don't really throw it backhand, but I love it forehand. It has to go in. Which leaves me room for one destroyer. What? Yeah, I know Connor. I'm having the same questions as you. I think, I think, I think this destroyer, it's the newest one in the bag. It's got to temporarily come out. There you have it, the photon's in. So when it's all said and done, let's count gyro discs that weren't in my bag that are now in my bag. We now have one, two, nine gyro discs pushed non-gyro discs out of my bag. Dang. I carry 25 discs. I carry 25 discs and now 12, 12 of the 25 are gyro. Basically this month experience just turned me half gyro. So there must be something to it because I mean, there are some there are some incredible flying discs in this stack that stock gyro discs were able to replace. So there's something to be said there. There you have it. That is my bag, back in its full glory. Uh, it does look good to have my Thunderbirds back. I'm not gonna lie to you, but hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you enjoyed this. That was the other thing. I thought it'd be hard to tell when I looked at my bag what this was what with the black rims. Uh -huh. Never had a problem. No, it never was an issue. You could see enough of the disc to be able to tell what it was. So, there it is. That's my bag. Hopefully you enjoyed. I really enjoyed this month-long experiment. I might be willing to do it for a different brand in the future as well. I think Gyro was the best brand to do it with because there is so many questions about like how it flies, the science behind it, stuff like that. Um, and, you know, like I said, my game during this month was very, very good. Um, I was playing very solid. Did I lose some events I shouldn't have with Gyro? Absolutely. Did I win some events I shouldn't have with Gyro? Yes. Uh, so overall, very happy with it. Happy with my new bag. And it pushed my limits. I would have never put nine Gyro discs in my bag if it wasn't for this month. So it was well worth it. I don't know what this video turned out to be. I'm about to edit it. It seems a little all over the place from me shooting it. But hopefully I'm able to work some magic and you just enjoyed whatever you just watched. But thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.